this week some of the uh, games to watch for OSU, Nebraska, Ohio State, about two touchdown favorites in this game. It's at Nebraska. Nebraska has lost a ton of games, but they've lost all of those games. It feels like by just about one score. Yeah, there's a couple blowout, you know, a couple ones that got stretched a little bit, but they're like the captain of the one score loss of blowing games. And so if they can ever figure that out. There is concern, you know, from Ohio State. They're going there. It's not an easy place to play. It's going to be packed to the hilt. Should be an entertaining game. 14 point dogs. Nebraska is three and six, but when you watch them play, they feel a heck of a lot better than that. It's a game to watch. Michigan State, Purdue, the newly minted three ranked Spartans. Take a look at that. It's Purdue plus three. Michigan State not favored by much, only a field goal in this game. This to me has a lot of feel to the last time Michigan State was taking on a team from Indiana, and that being the Indiana Hoosiers. They win that game, I believe, 20 to 15. You know, the number was four and a half. They barely cover it. I think they cover this number, but Purdue's good. They can throw the football down the field. You know, uh, they're dealing with the injury now, I believe, to Naylor in his hand. I'm curious his availability. They might not, you know, fully let everybody know on that until later around game time, but he's he's without a cast on his hand later in the game, coming off a big emotional win. Like this is the classic game that Michigan State loses, just like Indiana was kind of that classic game. They were able to pull it out against Indiana. Can they pull it out against Purdue? Have to get Kenneth Walker the third goal, and they had him going big against Michigan. He can be a settling force for the Spartans, and they're going to need him to get it done to take some of the heat off you know, their, their secondary because, let's face it, Purdue's got a pretty good passing attack, and if they get it going, could be a long day potentially for Sparty trying to hold on to that number three ranking. Huge game, in my opinion, the SEC, 13th-ranked Auburn, 14th-ranked uh, A&M. A&M, about a four-and-a-half-point favorite. If you look at where these teams are trending, you know, A&M, they've got a couple of, of wins here as of late. You know, obviously, they've got the Bama, but you're talking about South Carolina. You're talking about Missouri. No world beaters, no one to write home about. Conversely, you look at Auburn, they beat an Arkansas team that, you know, is not ranked but was playing pretty good football. And then an old Miss team that was playing some good ball. Good Bo Nix, good for Auburn. They would be my dark horse potentially to see if they could maybe upset Bama later in the year, but they've got to get through this game first. If they do this, I think Auburn might jump into the top 10 in the rankings. I know they have two losses, but they're playing good football now. You know, one of those losses was the Penn State on the road early in the season, so you can maybe kind of scrub that away a little bit. Can the Auburn Tigers begin to make this push behind Bo Nix? If he plays well, I think they beat AM, just like they were able to handle Ole Miss last week. There's something going on there in Auburn, Alabama, you like to see. LSU and Bama, a game that you circle each and every year, a game that this year, not a lot of intrigue. Bama about a four-touchdown favorite in this one. But you know LSU has some of the players, even though there's been some opt-outs and everything. It's a prideful team. You know, for gambling purposes, I would take those points. Four touchdowns is a lot. You know, I think you, you've watched this LSU offense be able to score in Bama. You know, they've shown some inconsistencies at times. They've shown the ability to bust. And they'll be amped up for this game. It's at Alabama. I still think this is probably more of a 21 or 24-point game. It's going to come down if Bryce Young operate, executes at a high level, if that Bama defense corrects some of their issues. Because they've had some flaws this year. It shouldn't be close, but I like the points in that one if you're going to give me four touchdowns and let me get the win. And then last game, looking out west, number four, Oregon. They're excited. They want to hold, this, hold the spot, want to be in the playoff, have some Pac-12 representation for the first time in a number of years. They've got, they're have got they going to Washington. Tough place to play. Washington playing better as of late. Beat Arizona. They're not good, but they beat Stanford, a team that beat Oregon. Recently, Washington getting healthy. This is a different team than the team that lost going into Michigan. They're at home. And you always have to be worried about that letdown. When you get ranked really, really high, is there a concern that next week you're feeling yourself a little bit thinking, we're in the playoff, we'll cruise through this. Because Oregon, they can't afford to even win close. They don't have the strength of schedule at the back end. There's no one else in the Pac-12 South that can give them a bump at the end. They don't really have the ranked teams to play, so it's going to come down to the eye test of how good you just actually think they are. 
And Ohio State's going to get big bumps at the end of the year should Michigan and Michigan State hold serve, get a bump from most likely a team that is ranked in the West, maybe not ranked high, but a ranked squad. They'll get that bumped. And so if you're Oregon, you've got to go out and dominate. Seven-point favorites against Washington. I think this could be a game that Washington could go out there and win. It's been a battle in the past. I'd take the points. I think Oregon pulls it out close. But keep this one circled on upset alert.